a lot of heavy breathing, a lot of heavy breathing in this film. Um, I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed. Guys, welcome back to the Cinema Scale. And today we are reviewing Blue Beetle, or as I call it, the Blue Roach. Uh, it, it, it was just a basic, average, boring film that's not going to make you feel any better, that's not going to do anything for you. Um, it will uh, take you through the tunnel of some emotional or fam, fam, uh, familial uh, aspects of life, you know, dealing with family. But other than that, I would not, I would not recommend it. Uh, let's talk about uh, the just the gist of the film. Let's start with number one, the plot. So the plot begins through arc and plausibility. Uh, young Mister Reyes has graduated college. He's coming from a struggling uh, Spanish family. And they are trying desperately to deal with the challenges of life, losing their home, having financial challenges, and having just put their boy through uh, college. And that's that. That's fine. Uh, the, you know that that part of the story arc is fine. So I gave it a point five in connection with that because that is a very common struggle in connection with persons who are, who are minorities. Um, they're going trying to make a better life for themselves, but they're having challenges. They're, they're having challenges. So it was good. The way that that was that was mentioned in the film that was that was good. Um, we know the plot breaks down the story arc and the plausibility, and so that's point five point for each. But in this case, I just gave point five for the story arc because uh, it made a lot of sense. But the plausibility, not so much. The the reality or the realistic aspect of it what was a zero. Just wasn't too great. Uh, number two, the attraction. That's our premise and our entertainment value. Um, I gave it a zero. When you when you think about a superhero film, you are trying to be pulled into the world of this hero, and the premise was just very dry. It was very dry. I, there were moments where the film was very choppy, very stagnant, and then you're just yawning in the theater. I think somebody behind me was just snoring it up, and I'm looking at this dude like, so you you just that's what, how we feeling today? We just gonna take a nap in the middle. So the premise was not, it wasn't great. Entertainment value-wise, you will enjoy seeing Blue Beetle on the big screen if you are a comic book fan or whatever the case is. Uh, but other than that, you're not going to find yourself entertained. Uh, so I had to give them a, a zero in connection with the attraction, the premise, and the entertainment value. Number three, identity and the depth. And this one was unique because... It, when you're dealing with a Spanish film, right, you're dealing with that culture, the culture of Spain, you want to make sure that you definitely put your teeth into the family aspect. And the reason that I say that is because that is what the culture is based on, family. Uh, so we know that Father Reyes in the film was the patriarch. He drove the family to decisions. He encouraged them. He built them up when things got stressed, things were a challenge. So I believe the identity and the depth of it being able to see this family start at one part of the film and then grow and it becomes something different at another part of the film towards the end of the film, I thought that that was excellent. So I did give them the point for that, the theme, the identity and depth, because uh, he is a Blue Beetle. He is a, a Hispanic character so and superhero. So that definitely uh, was well cultivated in the film. Number four, the acting um characters and performance oh gosh um so this is a very unique film because generally i i give him one point i'm usually impressed but then there are times when i'm not impressed i guess this would be one of them so i felt like the villain was very idiotic I, I didn't like the way the villain was portrayed. There was a lot of cliche dialogue. At one point, um, the villain became Whiplash from Iron Man 2. And I'm trying to figure out, like, so when did this start? We just borrow other person's tactics and whatnot. And then I just didn't really appreciate how the villain was was, was portrayed. I, I know the villain had a motive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I just felt like it should have been more frustration and more anger in connection with this character. Like, you're talking about someone who has a, a grudge, a gripe. He has his own background and story. And it comes up towards the end of the film. And I think that really just pulled away from his character. Which made him to be this dry, boring villain. That you're just is like, okay, here comes an idiot on the screen. He's about to do something 
very, very bad. You know, it, you could just see it coming. But the performance and the characters for the family, the, the Spanish family, I thought that was well cultivated. I really enjoyed um, the actors in the in the in connection with the the family. Uh, the Reyes family because they really were true to themselves um, and po- moments you you know you felt like uh, y- this is just a, a family but then there was moments where you felt like okay this is a Spanish family so we know that George Lopez was in there and uh, it was nice to be able to see him back on the screen I think that was just a highlight for me so in connection with um, c- characters and performance I-, I had to give them a point five in connection with that now number five this one is interesting that's the dialogue and so when you come to a theater especially a superhero film dialogue wise you want to make sure that you can be able to understand the storytelling in the context and that really wasn't conveyed i gave them a zero for dialogue it was very scripted it was very cheesy it was very oh uh, you should have finished me when you had the chance and i'm, I'm like dude why are we why, why are we regressing um it, it it wasn't you won't be quoting anything from this film that that's something that i really look forward to when i go to a film i want to make sure that hey that dialogue is so great that storytelling and context is so good i'm going to quote this i was in and out you understand what i'm saying i was in and out so the dialogue i definitely gave them a zero for it was just very it wasn't great at all uh that leads us to number six our cinematography that's our visual lighting language setting wardrobe etc it it wasn't done well it wasn't uh it's just it 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 wasn't it wasn't done well at some points i felt like they didn't even care um it was very very cheesy um you could tell that the cgi was kind of up and down even with in connection with their costumes and then when they're pulling out these weapons it looked very very juvenile yeah it just it screams young like just new to the industry it doesn't even you expect more from warner brothers studios you know just saying wardrobe wise i mean it was just the costume just looked very cheesy um it kind of reminded me a little bit of ant-man the the first movie um you know darren cross the villain in ant-man i just i'm like it looked like that costume concept but blue why are we why are we stealing number seven the 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 editing the pace and the effects it was all over the place like i just felt like it was just it wasn't there was no consistency when you go into a film guys you 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 have to have a measure of consistency or it's just not going to work and one of the things that really stood out to me was that there was a moment when he and, and the villain get into a fight for lack of spoilers uh blue beetle and they have their exchange of whatever physical altercation and then the screen kind of fades and dims out and i'm like why are we it's like a dissolve feature and i'm like why are we doing that like what what it was like a chinese kind of those old chinese movies you know what i mean like it's just a dissolve and i'm like that was just really irritating to see on the screen um it's one of those things where it's like you're watching one steady motion and all of a sudden it goes in another direction and you're like wait what why was that even there um number so i I had to give them a a zero for that now number eight soundtrack this one was a toughie i did give them a point one for the soundtrack because they had some very classic music in there and what was particularly noteworthy or unique was that they played the songs in spanish so uh, for example they played the song blame it on the bookie by michael jackson instead of playing that song through another singer that sings english or a cover of the song or even having michael himself his version play they played it in Spanish, and I thought that was clever, and that was unique, and that really stood out to me personally, because that just shows them giving homage to the Spanish culture, having the music in Spanish. Uh, number nine, that finds us in directing, the vision and the execution. If the director had an idea, or if he had a place in which he wanted to go, it wasn't conveyed here. It, it wasn't done masterfully. Uh, vision and execution. You see something in your mind and then you execute it. I I didn't see that. Um, I, I didn't see that from the director. It wasn't. It it wasn't. It wasn't done. It wasn't done well. Um, it is just. I just feel like I was looking at a film. A film with a Spanish family in it and a film with a superhero in it, and a lot of screaming around the film and. 
there's just no execution in that. It just certain things didn't really kind of make sense to me at some points, and then that was an irritant for me personally because if I can't understand as to what the whole idea of the film is, then that becomes a bit of an issue. So it it just if I can't get clear execution, then I'm just not going to be able to give you that that point on the scale. It's just it's just not going to happen. Number ten, guys, our final point. Number ten, my favorite, the it factor. What was it about this movie that stood out, made it one of a kind and transcendent? I would say the fact that we're dealing with a Hispanic, uh, Spanish uh, villain, uh, excuse me, superhero. Um, it's, it's not easy to give homage to certain cultures when you're telling another story that doesn't normally involve this culture. Well, what do I mean? For example, if you look at where superheroes started, generally they're Caucasian, Batman, Superman, Iron Man, the Green Lantern, etc. These are Caucasian persons, whatever the case is, for lack of going into the the history and all of those great things. But you look at them in the comic book, you look at them on paper, the first thing people are going to say is, wow, this is a Caucasian superhero. But now, growing into different superheroes, you got Miles Morales, you have um, different cultured superheroes or ethnicities. And one of the challenges in connection with having that is being able to be true to that character, that hero, but inter, to interwoving or bringing together the culture of that character with the culture of the hero that they're standing for. Did that well. I will say that the it factor, which made it one of a kind and transcendent for me, was how they were able to blend the two worlds. The Hispanic culture life, the Spanish culture life, alongside of the superhero life. That was really well done because family is one of the themes of the Spanish culture. And it was just twisted throughout the entire plot as you move forward each and every time. So, unfortunately, though, I'm going to have to say that Blue Beetle was a score 4 out of 10. Um, it's one of those things where I just got to be honest with you guys. It's my job to save you some money if I can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that you go rush out to see it on the weekend and play full price for it and think you're going to have to watch the best movie of your life. I, I, I would recommend a matinee or even waiting for it to go on stream or even renting a DVD and just doing a little house party so you can have that added support if it doesn't work out. Um, when you go into the theater, I think that you should be entertained. And if you're not being entertained, then the movie industry, the directors, the studio, they have failed miserably. So um, that's what I'm ruling it, guys. It's going to be a 4 out of 10. If you want to know what makes a movie pass the cinema scale, feel free to scroll through and look at some of those other videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're at 260 now and uh, loving each and every one of you guys because on my channel we keep it real because we love you. It's not about the likes. It's not about the follows and subscribers. It's about making sure you guys get the information that you need in order to make your internet experience, your movie experience, your fact channel all 100%. Um, there is one end credit at the end of the film if you want to stick around for it. Technically, there's two. The first one does add to the storyline, so we know that what's going there's going to be something coming up next. And then the other one is just after all of the credits roll. It's just a little little humor there if you want to stay and watch that one. But uh, other than that, it's going to be a 4 out of 10. Anyways, love you guys. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. I hope that you're doing well out there and enjoying your summer. Until next time, peace out.